Welcome everyone, I'm Spiro. Thanks for tuning in. Black Lives Matter has been dominating the headlines for weeks, and there's been a lot of speculation regarding the funding of this organization, with many fingers quick to point at George Soros. So, the million dollar question? Did Soros fund Black Lives Matter? Yes, he absolutely did, and I'll get to more of that in a minute. But George Soros is not the only source of funding for Black Lives Matter. In fact, Soros and his funding is just another spoke in the wheel of a massive, well-financed, politically motivated campaign with the desired goal to transform this current system of control and destroy it, basically, and out of the ashes of that, build a new system of control. This certainly sounds like a reoccurring theme right now. Uh, very similar to what we've been hearing from the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, the central banks and governments from around the world as they are preparing for the Great Reset and a global paradigm shift, which we'll get back to later in this video. But right now, we're going to look at who exactly is funding Black Lives Matter. According to their website, Black Lives Matter was founded in 2013 in response to the acquittal of Trevon Martin's murderer. Black Lives Matter Foundation Incorporated is a global organization in the United States, the UK, and Canada whose mission is to eradicate white supremacy and build local power to intervene in violence inflicted on black communities by the state and vigilantes, by combating and countering acts of violence, creating space for black imagination and innovation, and centering black joy. The BLM movement exploded in 2014 after a police officer shot dead unarmed 18-year-old Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, a controversial case as police responded to a robbery, and the suspect, Mike Brown, allegedly attacked the police officer, Darren Wilson, who then shot and killed Mr. Brown, according to reports. Now, a grand jury declined to press charges on the police officer. This was the catalyst for large Black Lives Matter protests that turned violent and became riots where we all witnessed massive civil unrest as demonstrators clashed with police and the National Guard on a scale that was shocking at the time, and so was the militarized police response. Around this time is when George Soros stepped in through his Open Societies Foundation, as well as grant-making from the Center of American Progress to the tune of $33 million to fund Black Lives Matter. Now, in addition to the $33 million contributed by George Soros, Another funding campaign was formed, the Movement for Black Lives, which received $100 million through the Black-Led Movement Fund, paid for by the Ford Foundation and Borealis Philanthropy, and directly funded Black Lives Matter and dozens and dozens of other similar groups, actually up to 150 other groups, including Black Lives Matter. Now, Black Lives Matter, at that point, had not only secured the financial support of wealthy donors, but also had the backing from their media organizations, which in addition to helping Black Lives Matter to recruit, it also helped to sell their movement and sow racial division, sell the narrative. This is classic divide and conquer. Now fast forward to 2016, a US presidential election year. BLM makes another massive strategic alliance with the Thousand Currents Foundation, which secured a fiscal sponsorship, which refers to the practice of a NGO, a nonprofit organization, offering their legal and tax-exempt status to groups, which is what this Thousand Currents uh, Foundation did for Black Lives Matter. And typically, this is only done uh, with projects uh, that the sponsoring organization endorses. Okay, And there's much more into this uh, Thousand Currents group and who they were previously. We're going to move on. Shortly after this new partnership, the Kellogg Foundation gave a three-year, $900,000 grant to the Berkeley, California-based Thousand Currents Foundation to build the infrastructure and capacity of the National Black Lives Matter movement. The Kellogg Foundation also contributes to other left-wing groups which actively work against the conservative and Republican politicians and their agendas. Again, keep in mind that the left-right paradigm is a false paradigm. This again falls into the divide-and-conquer strategy. Okay, moving on. In addition to funding Black Lives Matter, other Kellogg Foundation notable contributions include $49 million to the Tides Foundation, additional millions to the NAACP, the ACLU, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and George Soros' Open Society Foundation, just to name a few. Think that those dollars don't come with uh, any strings attached? Uh, well, decide for yourself. So we have already covered the early days and the recent history of Black Lives Matter, who has already received millions and millions of dollars over the years. But what about now? Who else is funding Black Lives Matter? Well, 
I saved the best for last for you. You want to know who else is funding Black Lives Matter right now? Well, chances are it's you. You, that's right, and me, and your brothers, and your sisters, and your neighbors, and your friends, and your co-workers, and millions of people around the world, and they probably don't even realize it. How is this possible, you ask? Well, because companies and mega corporations that you most likely do business with, and if not you, millions and millions of people around the world do business with, these companies are donating hundreds of millions of dollars to Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter uh, related groups at this point. Companies and mega corporations like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Nike, YouTube, Twitter, Microsoft, Netflix, Airbnb, virtually all of the major cell providers, just to name a few. The list literally goes on and on and on, and I'm going to provide links below so you can go through and see for yourself. So will someone please explain to me how exactly this Black Lives Matter movement is a grassroots organization when literally they have the support from virtually it's the entire establishment at this point. I haven't even gotten into the politicians or the celebrities who have publicly endorsed this or donated money themselves. So the next time you hear somebody say, well, how come Black Lives Matter is allowed to protest and riot and loot and beat people in the streets and kill people in the streets across the country and other countries while the rest of us are on lockdown? The answer is because they not only have the support of the establishment, they are a proxy army of the establishment or the deep state or whatever you want to call it. And when you read over the foundations which fund and support Black Lives Matter, you see that they also support the UN Agenda 21, the UN 2030 Agenda, uh, just like these mega corporations do. So I'm not surprised to see that the United Nations has been trying to get involved in this situation here in the US because, in my view, this plays right into the planned destruction of this country, and it's happening right now. This is just the next phase of the operation. And just to be clear, I'm not Republican and I'm not Democrat. I support basic human rights and civil liberties for everyone. But when I see a proxy army conducting a destabilization operation under the false pretext of seeking racial and social justice, I have to call it out. I have to call BS. This is not really about justice. This is certainly not about black lives, especially when you take into consideration the fact that Black Lives Matter is funded by rich white men, endorsed by the establishment, the same establishment that oppresses each and every one of us regardless of our race, our religion, our sexual orientation. This is divide and conquer 101. If we are too busy fighting each other over a manufactured crisis sold to us by the media and the politicians, and the celebrities, we will never rise up above this system of oppression which is targeting all of us. Wake up.